Hello, welcome, welcome to this clip going through question one from the 2017 Round 1 Chemistry Olympia paper. So if you wanted to get hold of this past paper itself um, and its mark scheme, you can go to www.rsc.org, which is the Royal Society of Chemistry's website, and uh, forward slash learn chemistry, learn hyphen chemistry, and then enter Chemistry Olympiad in the search box. It'll take you straight there. So every single Chemistry Olympiad question usually starts with something straightforward, uh, which is an application of the A-level chemistry ideas being tested, and it's usually something that's in the news or it's topical to that particular time. So in the 2017 paper, um, we'd had the Rio, Rio 2016 Olympics the year before, and uh, one of the things that was quite notable about this was the, the colour of the pool so if you look at this picture, you can see clearly that one of the pools is much greener than the other. And uh, initially this was thought that it was going to be uh, due to growth of algae, but obviously this uh, was strongly contested by the organisers of the, of the games, as you can see in the question. So we're still not quite 100% sure what happened, um, but uh, the chemistry behind this question is to do with sodium hypochlorite, NaClO. So the first thing they want you to do in part A is determine the oxidation state of chlorine in sodium hypochlorite. This is your straightforward question to get you started. So if we take the formula of sodium hypochlorite and we apply the oxidation number rules, we can see that sodium being a group 1 element, B plus 1, and oxygen um, is not in a peroxide here, so it's minus 2. So chlorine has to adopt an oxidation number that ensures the overall sum of all the oxidation states is zero. So therefore, the only way this can work is for chlorine to adopt an oxidation number of plus one. So moving on to part B, um, it says once dissolved, an equilibrium is established between ClO- and its conjugate acid. It asks that you give an equation for this equilibrium. This needs you to understand a little bit about second-year acids and bases as well as first-year acids and bases. So in first year acids and base chemistry, we learn that acids are species that lose a proton um, in aqueous solution. So a conjugate acid of a given species is the, that species with a proton added back on. So if you've got ClO-, it must be that combined with H+. So with all species in aqueous solution, you can write an equilibrium equation like that. Obviously, there's other possibilities using the hydronium ion instead of H+, but we'll stick with the simplest version here for now. So the third part of the question, part C. This asks you to make some deductions, as you have to think of a way to use the equation that you've just written to generate chlorine gas. So, in part C, they want you to think about how to produce chlorine gas from ClO- and H+. So making a bit of a jump here, um, in most chemistry uh, that involves acidic type reactions or alkaline type reactions, H2O can be put either side of the arrow, here it's on the product side, to use up hydrogens, protons or oxygens uh, on the left hand side. And in addition to that, if ClO- is going to be present, it's highly likely that the more common chloride ion is also available, or somewhere in the mix. So therefore I'm going to put a chloride ion in there, and uh, this now allows me to balance the equation by putting a balancing number of 2 in front of the H+. So obviously, like part B, there are other possibilities. You can use HCl, for example, or uh, H3O+. So in part D, what they want you to do is to give an equation for the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and hypochlorite. So this says that the organisers eventually explained the green colour in the pool as being due to the growth of algae after the inadvertent or mistaken addition of a large quantity of hydrogen peroxide, which would react with the hypochlorite to form chloride ions. So a little bit of background on hydrogen peroxide is useful here. Its formula is H2O2. And when it reacts, it generally does so to break down into water and oxygen gas. So this now gives you some species to put together into an equation. 
So that gives us something like this. Um, other possibilities are, are available, um, but you must make sure the equation is balanced and the named species from the question are included in your answer. So in part E, it tells you about hyperchlorites having a tendency to react with ammonia and ammonia-like compounds. To form compounds containing nitrogen and chlorine, one of which is nitrogen trichloride, NCl3. Now it says it causes eye irritation and the distinctive smell of swimming pools. So the first thing is to give an equation for the formation of nitrogen trichloride. So bearing in mind that the question mentions hypochlorites reacting with ammonia, that's where your starting point has to be. So there's several ways you could do this. I'm going to do the most simple way of doing it. So you start with uh, three ClO minus, obviously because you need three chlorines in your NCl3. You put in an NH3, and that also gives you as a side product at uh, 3 OH minus. So in part II, they want you to draw a structure for nitrogen trichloride showing its shape and state the approximate Cl N Cl bond angle. So this is a classic example of applying the valence shell electron pair repulsion and shape theory from your first year chemistry, plus also your use of uh, dotted lines and wedges to show the three dimensional structure. So drawing this out is very similar to ammonia, isn't it? Um, you've got your lone pair on your nitrogen. Um, I should say really one lone pair on nitrogen. So that gives us a 107 degree bond angle and a pyramidal shape. So let's now move on to the next parts of the question. So um, it says depending on reacting ratios, Another possible outcome of the reaction between ammonia and hypochlorite is the formation of hydrazine, H2N, NH2, and chloride ions, and it asks you to give an equation for this reaction. So, in the next part, um, it asks you to write an equation for the formation of hydrazine and chloride ions from ammonia and hypochlorite. So I've just put down the bare minimum of what they've told me. So thinking about balancing it, the oxygen in the hypochlorite gets used up in a water molecule on the right-hand side. This now means that you have six hydrogens on the right-hand side. The easiest way to generate six hydrogens is to double the ammonia. So if you double the ammonia on the left-hand side, you not only provide the six hydrogens which you now need for um, hydrazine and for the water, but you also provide the two nitrogens that supports the creation of one hydrazine molecule. So in part G, it says that copper 2 sulfate is sometimes added to swimming pools, and this was also suggested as the cause of the green colour. And it said that uh, the colour of copper 2 ions were also blamed for the green tint given to the bleached hair of the American swimmer Ryan Lochte. The copper 2 ions precipitate on the hair due to the high pH of certain shampoos. And it says, suggest a formula for the blue precipitate on Ryan Lochte's hair that made it go green. So there's a strong hint here in that this occurs at high pH values. And uh, that would suggest a relatively high OH- concentration. So this would be second year acids and bases knowledge, but it should be too difficult for someone in their first year to also work this out. So if you've done any work with precipitates, either first year or second year, you'll know that most hydroxides, except the ones in group one, um, are in fact insoluble in water at room temperature. So in all likelihood, the precipitate is probably going to be CuOH2, commonly known as copper 2 hydroxide. OK, so that takes us to the end of this question. Hopefully um, most of it was fairly accessible. Um, as Chemistry Olympiad questions go, it wasn't too bad. There were no um, difficult calculations as such. It was just a bit of de deduction. And there's quite a lot of connection with first-year chemistry as well. So it's a good synoptic one to look at if you're in your second year. And it's a nice one to get you started on thinking about the Chemistry Olympiad if you're in your first year. Until next time, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, see you soon.